So let's start tonight in a cross leg seated position. You can already put underneath your sit bones if you have that pillow that we're going to use at the end of the class, or you have a folded blanket or anything that bring the hip a little higher than the knees. Please do so and find your seated position here. Find your easy pose, either Sukhasana, or you can go into a half lotus if that feels more comfortable for your knees and your hips to settle down. And relax your shoulders, relax your face as you close your eyes and find your seat. Root through your sit bones, allow your pelvis to relax kind of invite the melting down into the earth to allow the spine to follow that sense of ease and comfort and relax the back as you do such relax the belly and find your center your center of balance your center of gravity so that you can naturally sit with no effort and invite the breath, therefore, as the body is getting ready to welcome the breath deeper and wider, invite the breath to come in and become aware of your own breathing tonight. Noticing what your natural pattern of breath is right now. Noticing if the inhale is longer than the exhale or vice versa or pretty equal. Noticing if there's any restriction on the way of the breath. Or if you're allowing already the breath to be wide, to be deep, to be broad. Notice if your diaphragm feels pretty flexible and soft, allowing the movement of the breath to naturally flow from inhales to exhales, expansion, contraction around the belly and expansion between the ribs to softening between the ribs through the breath in and the breath out. Maybe still thoughts passing through your screen, so the screen of your mind and allowing those, not forcing them to go anywhere, just watch and gently come back to the breath when you get stuck in one thought process and pulled away from your body and from here let's wave a little bit the spine from side to side gentle and easy all the way to the gentle waving of the neck the head so we're inviting a gentle movement to awaken a little bit more the body and prepare it for the practice and also to open up that container, that space from within a little broader. And finding your center and find gentle waving forward and back, changing the axis of the spine and finding a gentle pulse where you bring your attention to the heart space expressed into the chest through the front and the space between the shoulder blades to the back. Find that pulse. And see how your wavy breath is creating those waves of motion through your spine, up and down, all the way to the cervical spine, to the neck. Slowing down and now waving from one twist to the other twist. So releasing your hands from your knees, palms up and kind of sweeping the arms from side to side parallel to the floor. Allowing your head to follow the movement of the shoulders and the arms. Couple more from side to side. And 
and back to center, resting your hands on your lap again, finding now a center that maybe is a little truer, a little more authentic now that you've moved the spine in all directions and it's easier to find that inner channel. Take a couple of breaths into your heart space to connect to that heart warmth and openness that hopefully will blossom and open bigger through the practice tonight. And plant your seed, plant your sankalpa. Maybe there's an intention rising already, bubbling up and finding its space, a spot right in the cave of the heart. No forcing, no frustration for not finding it right away. Let it come up to you and start swirling start circling around and using the hands to press and shift and move and turn and swirl around circling that is usually an access to fluidity is also an access to centering from the outer circle you come progressively into the inner spiral and into your own inner core inner center from the per per periphery of the body and expressing the body into the space around we find behind the walls of the body, behind the protections and the masks that we expose to the outside world every day, we tap in and we find that center of ourselves, that peaceful, unmovable center that always remains even when we don't see or feel it. So find that intention also of gathering the circle out to spiraling in and reverse find the access to the other side that might have a taste of awkwardness at first because we usually go into the direction that feels so spontaneous or organic so accessible and we switch sides and feel you feel a little odd at first and you have to come to that friendly space of acceptance that it doesn't feel quite the same than the other side and you roll with it and a couple more and back to center and releasing the support of your sit bones under you. You're going to bend the left knee up, place your left foot flat to the side, right hand to the right, left arm to the front of the left knee and to the inner uh, thigh and you're going to rock the left hip toward the right knee, pushing that knee back with your left arm and stretching the chest forward. And then come back in and round back. Inhale forward and back. Roll forward and back. Feeling the opening to the inner thigh on the left side. As you come forward, you press down into your left foot. And you rock that hip from inner rotation to outer rotation. Breathe in and out. You can use that right hand to push yourself forward and relax back to more and last and back and lean to the right lifting your left sit bone you're going to grab the front of the left knee pull in and then swing back pull in and forward and swing back and you can find that maybe it's easier to the front of the knee for you or maybe it's easier to half shin so find your access pull in and out couple more and back and stay 
press that shin into the hand, stretch back and release. Curl in, left leg in, right foot flat, right knee bend, arm to the inside of the leg, left hand down, and we're gonna rock the right hip forward and back. And rock as we push the right leg back and sit and lift curl the tailbone back and drop three more breathe in and out and in and out and last one push in and out land into that left hand grab the knee either to the front of the knee or to the shin pull in and stretch back swing in and back you can reposition that left hand the way i did it right now to have a wider range of motion your range of motion might be slower and smaller than mine just explore a couple more and back. again stay here and push the shin into the hand stretch the shoulders back and gently release opening your legs out to the front wide out to wider than mic distance apart find also your your width so if you're really tight your hamstrings are really tight your low back is tight your hips are tight maybe this is the distance if not you explore a little wider and we're gonna go into rotating and dropping. Lift up and to the other side. And very easy with the spine. You're not trying to reach to the foot. You're not even trying to have a nice uh, straight back. You're just kind of pulsing from side to side. There's a little bouncing effect. You can use your hands to bounce yourself back up. And find that rhythm Find the position of your hand that is supporting the movement here as we warm up and access the back of the legs. You can close your eyes, relax your head, use the weight of the head to kind of bounce you onto one leg, relax the belly. Find that extra space as you lift, extend, and then round as you drop. more and back to center sit up and tall inhale arms up hold here hold the breath exhale through the central channel from the third eye to the throat to the heart press down palms down inhale arms out and up hold the breath gently gazing up to the third eye exhale through the third eye the throat the heart the belly pushing down to the earth inhale arms out and up hold the breath engage mula bandha upward lift of mild uddiyana bandha exhale third eye gently through the throat the heart press and push down last one breathe in hold squeeze pelvic floor pull up from the low belly toward the sternum and exhale through the forehead the throat the heart down and push down closing your legs in shake your legs out Rotate your ankles a few times in one direction. And reverse. And back to neutral, transitioning to all fours. Lining hands about underneath the shoulders, a little wider out, not closer in. And same way 
the knees, depending on how it feels right to you, can be hip distance apart, a little broader to allow the belly to drop, the butt cheeks to set apart a little wider. And then we're gonna inhale into that pooling of the spine to the crown of the head. Pelvin is lifting, you're arching your back, spreading the shoulders back. Maybe a slight breath retention at the end of the breath out. Sinking a little deeper into the spine. And then take an inhale, full inhale, rib cage away from the sit bones. Exhale, start rounding up, squeezing the breath out. As you round your spine, you curl the tailbone under, you drop your head. So much dropping your head that you're uh, gazing at your navel. And then inhale again, wave out. Stretch, expand. Exhale, round up, push away, squeeze the navel in. Look at your navel, curl in like a snail. Two more, breathe in. Maybe a slight breath retention at the end of the breath in this time. And exhale, squeeze in. Low ribs come closer to the pubic bone. Squeeze the navel into the low back. Hold the breath out. And relax back to center. Come to that neutral spot. Start swaying the hips, swinging the hips from side to side. And then with the sway of the hip, uh, hips, we're gonna lift one hand at a time. Lift and lift and lift. And now one knee is lifting with the hand. And swing back to knees down, across the shoulders. And back to center. Stretching the right hand towards the left corner of the mat forward and planting your left arm down, left cheek down, rolling across onto your left shoulder, breathe. One more breath, full stretch, spread right behind the left shoulder blade. Then slide your right hand in close to your face, not to close in, but at the level of the face and out. Push into that right hand, right elbow is bent to 90 degree. Lifting the right knee up and see if you can extend that right leg up to the ceiling. Flex the foot, rotate the toes in. Breathe deep. and releasing that right knee down using the core the belly to stabilize pressing up release your left arm up to the sky and back down to all fours realign to all fours slide your left hand towards the right corner of the mat and then slide your right arm across Underneath your left armpit, drop onto your right cheek, stretch into your thread the needle. You're lengthening through the left arm and left side of the body, and you're rolling into the back of the right shoulder. You're pressing into your right arm all the way to the back of the right hand, and you're pulling and opening the space underneath the right shoulder blade. Sliding your left hand to align with your face, several inches away from your face, bending your left elbow to 90 degree. Shift your weight to your right knee as you lift your left knee up. And then extend when you're stable, your left leg up and out. Rotating your left toes in, strong leg, inner rotation from the left hip joint all the way to the inner ankle. Pull the low belly in right above the pubic bone. Press it in and up toward the lower ribs. Stabilizing the pose here. One more breath. 
and keeping that stabilizer at the navel area, lowering the left knee down, shifting weight to the left knee and the left hand to release your right arm up, stretch and reach. And exhale, release back to all fours, walking your hands a little further forward than the alignment with the shoulders, so maybe an inch, two inches forward. And scroll the toes under, press through the ball of the feet, try to curl those toes under as much as you can, then sit back, sit bones to heels, keeping your arms straight. Long deep breath, then you're gonna tilt the, ta the chin away instead of dropping the head down and try to tick the, tilt the tailbone up. So you're almost wanting to engage into an arching of the back. And from this position, press into the ball of the feet and lift the sit bones up. Bend the knees as much as you need to keep this arching of the back. The lifting of the sit bones, you're looking forward with your gaze, your chin is sliding away, your throat is nice and long, you're not compressing your back between the, your, the back of the neck between the shoulders, you're more of sliding the chin forward. And then relax your head down, press through your feet to lift the sit bones up and find your full expression of down dog, that first expression, not your um, ultimate expression after warming up, but that's your full down dog within this first attempt and breathe. Find space from pressing into your hands, out to your fingertips, and reaching to the back of the legs to the wall behind you. Now play with the breath a little bit here. Squeeze the breath out. Squeezing around the navel, feel that activation with the front of the hips get closer to the low ribs. And then inhale, expand out. And exhale, squeeze in to the low back, almost as if you were gonna round this time the low back. Inhale, relax the belly and stretch out. And one last, squeeze the belly, really tight in, feel the pull and the lengthening on the low back. And release all those actions to soften the knees. And we're gonna walk the dog forward to the edge of the mat, hover, and then walk back to back of the mat, and walk forward. If you were an animal, one paw at a time, hover, and walk back. And last one, walk forward, over and walk back bringing feet to the back of the mat hip distance apart walk your hands towards your feet bend your knees deep drop the belly between the thighs drop your head between the knees or to the front of the knees and shifting weight from foot to foot gently swing from side to side from across the shoulders swaying in the winds and coming back to center walking your hands out to your down dog stretch out Gently sway your tail now. Your tailbone is gently swinging from side to side and you're using the action of the tailbone swaying to pull and stretch from one armpit to the side of the hip from side to side. Coming back to neutral. Stepping forward your left foot. and bringing your right knee down, but making sure you're dropping your right knee far back, that you're not shortening your stand here, lower down, relax your toes back, 
and using the front knee, the front leg, to give us support to the left side of the chest, the left side of the belly. Extend your right arm forward. Rotate your right, right palm and hand. And reverse. And then pressing that left hand down to the outside of the left foot. Lift the chest away, start lifting your right arm and opening out to the side. Follow back, keep your right hip anchor forward. Rotate and inhale forward. Press, push, stretch, open the chest. Mindful movement, one more. And stretch back. And release both hands down. Scroll your back toes under. Press through the back heel to lift the knee up. Square the hips to the front. Squeeze in. And then push back. Inhale, squeeze the right hip forward. Rotating your right inner thigh in and then stretch out and back the right hip opens a little bit you go a little lower down one more squeeze forward and back dropping your right knee again to the floor left hand to the left knee lift the right arm up push and slide that left knee forward and with a straight arm lift the torso up and we're going to go into slight bumping of the right arm, sliding through the side of the right ear from forward to back. Inhale, pull the belly in a little bit. Exhale, stretch back. One more. And back to neutral. Release that right hand down. Release the left hand down. Pick up by scrolling your back foot under. Lift and stretch back into down dog. Swaying your tail from side to side. And coming back to center, step up right foot, bringing your left knee down this time, but make sure again that you press through the back heel back to find that maximum space between the right foot and the back knee as you land. Resting the right side of the chest, right side of the belly on your right thigh. So that right arm can be completely relaxed here, doesn't need to be supported. And extend and reach with your left arm. Rotate your left wrist and palm. And maybe you reverse here the rotation. Stop rotating, anchoring your right hand close to your right foot, and start pushing into the right hand to rotate the left. The right knee is pressing against the right arm, and the left arm is opening, stretching up, back, swinging forward, and press outside of the knee to the arm, arm to the knee as you reach and open from the left shoulder back, hips stay forward, inhale. slightly open, outer rotation of the left thigh, and then pull in, inner thighs towards each other, square the hips almost to the point that you want to bring your left hip past the right in alignment, and then soften, and one last, squeeze in, pull that energy in, and then soften out, bringing your left knee down, maybe you've gained a little more space here, root and ground, 
right hand to the right knee. Press into that right hand, press into the right foot. Extend your left arm and reach up. Right arm straight, lift the sternum, lift the chest, find decompression into the low back as you lengthen up and start swinging that left arm. It can be a tiny half an inch forward to half an inch behind your ear or just reaching at your ear level. Keep the length. Find the pulse of the breath. There's a tiny movement of the hips forward and down and back and squeeze the belly. Last one. Stretch and release. Left hand down, right hand down. Curl the toes under, lift. Lift your hips a little higher. Hop back, right foot and find your swaying across the hips. Couple more here. And walking or stepping forward, both feet to between the hands. Root and ground, feet hip distance apart, bringing the heel slightly out into a slightly in. Find the root, the base of the big toes as you lift maybe your toes up and see if you can roll the hips forward and under a little bit more. You can bend your knees a little deeper if you have tight hamstrings. If not, kind of stretching the sit bones in any case up. Even if your knees are bent, give that inner rotation to lift the sit bones. Relax and shake your head down. And relax into that center point, your head nice and loose and bring your hands to the outside of the calves on the sides of the leg, lower to the knees. And then you're gonna press with your hands in as you press the legs into the hands out. And find that action, that opposite direction action from legs and hands. And from here, spread the sit bones apart. And then soften back in, stop the action, fall deeper. And then press again, legs against the hand, hands against the leg. Lengthen the spine away a little bit, spread the sit bones apart. And exhale, relax down. And once more, press, legs against the hands, press to the ball of the feet, especially the base of the big toe. Extend the spine forward, this time lifting to halfway up. Keep the action of the legs, push down into the ground and relax your arms right underneath the shoulders. So here your back is literally halfway up, meaning spine parallel to the floor. And we're gonna circle hands and arms in the space right under us using gravity from the weight of the shoulders down to the arms. Keep your legs actively engaged, the spreading across the sit bones to broaden the low back. And reverse. Belly is engaged, squeezing around the navel. Relax your face. Relax your arms. Exhale, drop and fold. Bend the knees deep, bring your hands to the low back, clasping the fingers, palms together. Stretch the knuckles back as you lengthen the spine forward, roll the shoulders back. Push down through your feet, squeeze the belly, lift up. Feel the stretch in the back of the legs. Find that squeezed mountain where you're pressing the knuckles down. You can even bend the elbows a little bit and kind of one shoulder at a time, roll them back. Find your spot, press the knuckles down, lift the sternum, your head tilts back a little bit, open the throat, inhale here. Exhale, bend the knees and start coming forward. Once you reach your edge, drop your head and swing your arms forward as you straighten the legs. Deep inhale and exhale in the shoulder stretch here. 
Bend the knees softly in, hands to the low back. Release the bind of your hands, bring your hands down. Stepping back, right foot. Ground that back foot. Make sure that you're not narrowing your stand here, meaning not aligning the heels together. You open your right foot out to the side. So the alignment here of the heels is hip distance apart. And then grounding from the legs, lift and rise up. Arms up. Take a breath here or two, stabilize. Find the support of the legs and start waving from side to side. So the same waves, connecting to the wave we started the class with, where we're sitting and just warming up. Find that softness and find that polarity between the strength and the support of the legs and the wavy spine and upper body. center, opening out to warrior two, reposition the feet, and find your stand here, and it can involve a lot of movement, this is moving the body can be majorly traumatic in big movements or in tiny movements, but sometimes those tiny movements is what we need to release tension and restriction. And we're gonna press that right arm forward with the hand flexed, and then bring your left arm up and across and tilt back. Inhale to center, press, exhale, go back. Inhale, center, Exhale, press with the right hand and stretch out with the left arm. One more, breathe in and press until back, exhale. Coming back to neutral to your warrior two. Bringing your left foot in, feet to parallel, thinking about aligning the outer edges of the feet to parallel, lifting the inner arches. And then we're gonna open the arms out to the side and start spreading the butt cheeks apart to the back as you engage those legs, the same action we did when we were standing in forward fold and come forward. Keep the length, keep the openness, find the floor, land your hands either high here, a little lower, trying to find a soft bend in the elbows and we're gonna wave the spine across from side to side, a little high to the floor. You're not waving down here. You're pushing and kind of hovering the floor. Couple more. Back to center, stretch your arms forward in the same position you would have your hands and arms in down dog. Glue those hands down and find that pulling action forward as you press your sit bones back and reach back with the sit bones, drop your head down between your arms, breathe deep. Now find the pulse of your breath right behind the shoulder blades and to the center of the chest in the front. Inhale, feel the pull between the shoulder blades, exhale, feel the softening of the heart space down. Inhale, pulse up between the shoulders. Exhale, drop. Couple more. And out. And last. And out. walking the hands back in, pressing down firmly into the outer edges of the feet, lifting the inner arches, hands to the side of the ankles, and we're gonna roll up, bending the knees, sliding the tip of the fingers through the sides of the legs, roll up. And opening now the right foot out to the back of your mat, 
bending that front, the right knee in, and opening out to warrior two here. This time pressing your left hand across toward the front, right arm back. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, press across and lean back. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, breathe in. And out. Coming back to warrior two. Pivoting to warrior one. So you're squaring the hips toward the back of the mat. Maybe you close your left foot a little closer up toward the right. You open your right foot out maybe a little bit. Lift the arms up. And breathe. And start gently waving from side to side as you feel the anchoring of the leg, especially the back leg is super strongly engaged and straight. Your front leg can be bending a little bit or go a little deeper. And move like seaweed in the ocean. Find your challenges here, maybe the struggle to keep the balance and root deeper down. Find those deeper, longer roots from the ball of the feet, the outer edges of the feet, down to the earth. Back to center, inhale. Exhale, lower down. Rotating your right foot in, come to the side again. Bringing your heels a little further out and aligning the outer edges of the feet. Press up to the fingertips and gently wave. Keep your legs strongly engaged here. And now adding to the movement of the waving, bending one knee at a time and going from side to side and progressively opening the toes and feet out to about 30 degree, 45 degree angle and go a little deeper bending one knee at a time and lowering the opposite inner leg. And maybe the stretch is really high if you're really tight, or you're able to go lower to the ground. You may even be able to slide your hands from right to left. Couple more. Next time you're going toward your left foot, go all the way there, start pivoting onto your back foot, your back toes, pivot and open your left toes out, find your lunge, round the hands, inhale. Exhale, push back, down dog. Sway your tailbone from side to side, maybe bend one knee at a time to kind of walk your dog in the traditional way that we do in yoga. Back to center, pull forward to plank position. Hold your plank, soften the heart space, don't push it away, don't push and lift the upper back. Engage your core a little deeper to give the um, deeper layers. Now I'm gonna bring the left knee forward, drop, lift up. Exhale, push back into plank. Right knee forward, right shin down, drop the left knee, lift up. And exhale, push back to plank. Left knee, left shin, inhale. Exhale. Right leg forward, drop, lift. Exhale. One more on each side, left knee. Push back, right knee, push back and hold, take a deep breath in, a long breath out, drop the knees down, tuck the tailbone up and lower chin and chest, elbows tucking in, 
take a breath or two here. Relax your toes and pull forward, left up, either to cobra or a little higher. And wave again from side to side. Rooting the front of your legs all the way to the feet to give stable mobility to the spine. Couple more. Find center. Inhale, throat opens, chin up. Exhale, keep that gaze to the third eye as you lower belly, low ribs, chest. And finally, land your forehead and bring your hands in prayer above your head, not to the ceiling, but forward. And breathe in prayer here. Couple more breaths. going to bring index fingers and thumbs to make a triangle. So stay where you are, I'm going to show you. So this is a triangle shape. And you're going to play that triangle as you're laying down to underneath your forehead. Elbows out to the side. Kind of framing your third eye into a triangle. And then we're going to press into those hands, forearms, and lift up. Press and lift. You can lift a little bit or a little higher. Feel the compression into the low back. But stretch your ribs forward and find that length into the belly. And exhale, lower down. Then move your hands to your throat level, same triangle, chin is down, and we're going to inhale, lift and stretch, push into the hands, lift up, elbows out to the side, you have almost like a circle between your arms, pull the sternum forward, feel the stretch on your belly, from where the lower ribs meet, straight line towards the navel, and exhale, lower down. Now, if you can, place your triangle at the heart level, chest, and we're going to inhale, stretch away, use your back muscles here to engage first, and then push and lift, see if you can go a little higher, or modify, bend the elbows if the compression is a little too much for you, ground through the front of the hips, and the front of the thigh, the front of the feet, all the way to the low toes down. Exhale, lower all the way down. Extend your arms forward, this time palms down, shoulder distance apart, forehead down, and rock your hips from side to side, pushing in one elbow at a time to give that traction. Coming back to center, slide your hands to frame your chest, push up, heavy head, transition through all fours, and then bring big toes to touch, maybe open your knees a little wider, and you round and fold back into child's pose. Now you wrap your arms to the side of the body, palms facing up, and again, you may or may not, up to you, gently rock from side to side, rolling against your forehead, swaying and swinging into the hips. Back to center, framing your hands to the side of the knees, push and roll up to sitting 
closing knees and feet together if that's comfortable for you. If this is too much for the knees, you can try to put one of the pillows that I was asking you to get for the class underneath your sit bone, between your sit bones and your heels. You can place there also a folded blanket if that feels a little more supportive. Hands on top of your lap. You're gonna bring your right hand on top of the left, palms facing up. Gentle touch of the tip of the thumbs together. Close your eyes. And feel the body, feel the quality of sensations along your spine, into your belly, into your hips, through your legs. Find ease and deep comfort into your breath. Feel its fullness, feel its presence, feel its nourishment. Take one more breath here. And opening the eyes. Inhale, come up to your shins, open the knees to hip distance as well as the feet. Rotate your palms forward, arms to the side of the body, and you're going to use the spread fingers and the action of the palms to press back. Soft elbows following, lift the sternum up and open back, lift into a rising camel. And from here, place your hands as such. Fingers up, and you're creating the triangle shape here onto your sacrum, and pulling that sacrum down, not forward, but down. And lift and stretch a little further. If this is not comfortable for you, you can also take the option of grabbing opposite forearms and grounding the forearms on the low back. back in and you're gonna come gently forward hands frame the knees try to bring the top of the head really close in for the knees and give yourself a little rocking rabbit here <coughs> folding back into child's pose <coughs> Extend your arms forward, forehead down, lift up to all fours, and back up to down dog. Notice here in your down dog, if something has shifted, if you have a little more access to a part of your body that was a little more numb before, if you have a deeper sense of stability and stillness, effortless pose here, or if you have shaking or anything else that you become a little more aware and present with. Shifting forward, bringing your right knee toward the chest, trying to aim that right knee to your right armpit. And you're lifting really high on the ball of the foot, your hips are lifting, squeezing the belly in, you're floating that knee toward the elbow or toward the armpit. And then swing across, bring it to center, square the hips and find a soft, easy landing. Maybe you shift forward a little bit and back and land right behind your right hand, sliding your left, foot and left leg back, using your curled toes to find even more length through the back, and then give a little rocking to the hips from side to side. Find center again, flex your front foot, press through the outer edge of the front foot, stabilizing the knee, hands frame the front knee, left up, 
Keep your back toes under. Keep that back leg active even though the knee is down. And then from that length and the openness, you start reaching forward and out. Then you can relax your back toes and you fall completely into your half pigeon. Close your eyes and breathe. Become a little more present with the support of the ground here. Find a melting from the point that are completely supported and in contact with the floor, which is an easier access to relax from. Into the hips that obviously are not touching the floor. So finding that softness from the contact of the front knee with the floor, the back knee with the floor, the arms forward, to soften anything that is not in contact with the floor. Feel your belly breath expanding against the front leg, go to the space between the leg and the floor. Relax a little softer into your armpits. Relax a little softer to the front of your throat. Relax a little softer between breath. Sliding your hands in, find the full grounded support of the hands with the floor and push and rise, roll up. Walk your hands a little further back toward the hip level, push into either your flat hands or your fingertips and lift, feeling the stretch to the front of the left hip. Soften to neutral, plant your hands, scroll your back toes under, lift that right knee, and press back into down dog. Bending one knee at a time, switching from side to side, reset. Coming to the other side, coming to plank first, and then bringing that left knee to your left armpit. Lift your hips a little higher, press into the ball of the back foot, as if you were gonna lowly go forward and run. Hug around your belly. And then start shifting forward and back a few times. As you bring now your knee more toward the center, opening the foot out to the side. Forward and land. Scroll those back toes under or start walking that foot back. Rock your hips from towards the left heel and back and away a few times. Keeping the right knee down, but your right toes still under. Find center here, push and press up. And finding that length, since it's a maximum expression right here, right now, and start reaching forward, walking out, feeling that lengthening, pulling forward, round forehead down, relax your back toes, you can drop the elbows and forearms down, 
and relax. And again, find the support of the floor in the parts of the body directly in contact with it. And allow that support to let other parts of the body relax and melt a little deeper down. Find your breath to the fullness of the breath in, to maybe the natural pause at the end of the breath in, to the deep long breath out, and maybe to the pause on empty breath at the end of the breath out. And find that kind of square breathing, the four stages of the breath on your own Play with it in the stillness of your half pigeon. and slide to the side of the knee, framing the front knee to about shoulder distance apart. Oh, I personally like to have it a little wider than that. And then lift, roll the spine, support your right rising up. And move your hands a little closer in to framing the hips and push and lift and find the axis to the front of the right groin. From the front of the right groin, feeling it on the right side of the belly. And then softening back to neutral. Find your hands firmly planted. Scroll your back toes under. Engage Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha. Upward lift of the belly as you engage the pelvic floor lock and lift. And stretch back into your down dog. Last sway of the hips from side to side. Back to center, opening your feet wider out, rotating your toes out a bit, bend the knees. Sit bone reaching to the space between your heels, stretching forward really long. And then walking one hand at a time in and finding a squat to the back of your mat. Find your landing. If you need, you can place a blanket across underneath your heels if you're not able to touch the heels down and round into the squat. Drop your head down. Bring the elbows and upper arms to open the knees out. Slide to the spot, the cushiony spot of the inside of the knees with the elbows, hands together. Slide your hands in toward the heart center, press the palms together, press down into your feet. Drop the tailbone. Feel the opening into the hips and across the pelvic floor. or two more breath here and softening in stay rooted bring one hand behind you to find landing and stretching your legs forward flex the feet sitting tall in dandasan staff pose pulling your toes back even trying to stretch your toes apart a little bit Inhale, arms out and up. Find extra space as you're lengthening and reaching through one arm and one side of the body at a time, shifting from side to side a few times. 
Then finding center and straight up. Inhale. Exhale, start leaning forward, hinging from the hips. Maybe you touch your toes, maybe you land on your legs. Whichever way, try to keep your toes reaching back. And then pull yourself forward. So instead of just rounding into a forward fold, sit bones rolling back. You can bend the knees here. Your hamstrings are really screaming at you. And that one might give you access to pulling your toes back with your hands and the front of the shoulders is rotating back as the back of the shoulders is pulling back. Opening the chest forward and trying to find almost a softening between the shoulder blades. Pull the sternum forward, reach a little deeper into the very core of the hamstring here. So if you feel that when your knees are pressing down that you feel the pull toward the knees, then bend the knees a little bit to move the stretch right to the core, to the middle part of the hamstring as you reach your sit bones back. One more breath here. And then we're gonna go in the opposite direction. You're gonna start rolling the hips back and rounding. And if you can still have access to holding either on your legs or on your feet and you're trying to spread the shoulder blades apart you drop your head down and you pull as if you wanted to slowly bring your back onto a wall behind you but you're preventing that to happen because you still have the access to the hands spread squeeze the belly in and soften forward relax back up so now we're at the back of the mat. We're gonna use abs and mobility of the hips to walk forward with that, without the hands. So you're lifting one hip rolling forward, one at a time, and sliding forward with legs straight. And we're gonna do it one more time going back. all the way to the back of the mat. Feel the churning into your belly here. And again, forward. And stay forward at the edge of your mat. Bending the knees up, hands behind your legs. Walk back, find balance. Lift the feet up, sole of the feet together, knees out, shift to grabbing your big toes with index, middle finger, wrapping the thumb around, open the knees out as your feet are up the floor, shoulders back, back is straight, and we're going to open one leg at a time. Your opening might be just here in a half happy baby pose on each side, or maybe you're able to straighten the leg all the way out, balancing, engaging the core for that balancing, stretching and pulling one leg at a time, or halfway, and let's do both legs, either halfway, and in that case you're pulling your knees back towards underneath your armpits, or you stretch your legs all, all the way out and you bring the chest forward and the shoulders back and breathe. Find a spot in front of you to gaze out with a soft gaze. And we're going to bring the legs back in. So if they're bent here, you just bring them here. They're straight out, pull the legs in. If your knees are bent, you might explore, releasing your hands. Here, you may also explore, releasing your hands, or keep your feet actively engaged through the pulling of the toes back. And then in whichever version you're in, let's see if we can 
release and start very slowly lowering down. Keep that belly strongly engaged. Chin naturally comes in. Land. Once you find your landing, swing your arms behind you, point your toes forward, palms facing up to the ceiling. Give yourself a nice long body stretch. This is where we take our block or our bolster or our blanket, whatever you have, pillow, and you're going to bend the knees. If you are preparing for a bridge, do no need to bring the feet too close to the sit bone. They can be a little further away. And then press left and place that block or that support underneath your low back. Take a moment here and support it, bridge. Relaxing into softening all across the low back, from across the low back to the tip of the hips and to the space right across from the tip of the hips to the ins uh, outside of the pubic bone, right across down here, and from right above the pubic bone toward the navel. So all this triangle here, let it relax, especially at the end of the exhale, let it melt into the support of the low back. So find the movement of your breath here, low, low into the belly. Taking the breath all the way down to that root diaphragm, the pelvic floor. And see if you can really feel the expansion of the pelvic floor as you inhale and the gentle contraction and release in of the pelvic floor when you exhale. Two more breath here. And then we're going to bring the knees up, float the knees up. Make sure you're well supported across the low back and extend your legs up for Vipari Takarani. Relax. Just in the inversion, feeling the weight of the legs shifting to becoming lighter at the feet and heavier into the femur bone and the low back legs. The weight of the legs just cascade down into the support of the low back. You can close your eyes and tap in, getting more tuned with what you're feeling and the different shifts that are happening through the inversion, including maybe a little shaking here and there. One or two more breaths here. Make them long and deep. Don't rush them. Now we're going to bend the right knee towards the right side of the chest. Catch the knee either to the front of the knee or even to the shin. Pull the knee in with your hands. And then start lengthening that left leg forward, covering the floor or see if you can anchor the heel down as you flex the foot and feel the stretch into the left groin. The left psoas here. And you can leverage here once your heel is down and anchored. <coughs> you can leverage how much you're pressing your right knee in versus how much you're pressing your heel down. <coughs> and sorry for the cough, but I have the fan on and the AC, and it's drying my throat out. <coughs> and 
Now from here, keep that left leg in the same position, but shift the right hand to the inside of the right knee and open that right knee and right leg out. Support it with your fingers to the front of the shin and just find the right opening that the left hip is not rolling out to the right. So ground across the low back. Press into the left heel. And guide that right knee back in. Cross left hand to the outside of the right knee. Relieve that right arm. And press the knee across without lifting the right side of the low back. Left leg is still engaged. Feel a squeezing like a diagonal squeezing from the tip of the left hip to the low ribs on the right. And bring that right knee back to its neutral position. Pull it in a little bit. <clears throat> and bending your left knee up again. Stretch both legs up and the parita karani again. Maybe as I'm doing here, rotate your ankles. <clears throat> a few times in one direction, a few times in the other direction. And relax. Bend your left knee in. Grab the knee to the front of the knee or the front of the shin. Pull it in. And start lengthening that right leg out. Flex the foot. Anchor the heel. And from that right leg, press down. Feel the opening and stretching through the front of the right groin. And again, find your leveraging here between folding the left knee in versus extending and pressing the back of the right heel down. And breathe. <clears throat> Now switching the position of your hands again, bring your left hand this time to the inside of the left knee, opening the knee out without lifting that right hip, without rolling the right hip toward the left. Find your angle. Guide the knee back into center, switch. Right hand to the outside of the knee, left hand releases out and bring the knee across to the point that the left side of the low back wants to lift, stay here. So there's a pulling out toward the left from the torso to leverage so that you're not just rolling out. And feel that across from now the right hip to the low left, uh, low ribs on the left and feel the stretch into the outside of the left leg to the inside of the left hip. That's why I'm feeling it right now. Keep your right leg active, press down into the heel. One more breath. And then softly bring that knee back to center. Hold onto the knee, pull it in one more time. This time you're going to release that left foot down and stretch and extend both legs out to the front, pulling your toes towards you both. And then stretch your arms behind you, full stretch to the front of the hips. And relax, arms to the sides, slide your feet along the mat, bring your feet hip distance apart, finding that initial position. Lift the hips up to release the block or the pillow or whatever you had underneath your low back. Roll the spine back down, find neutral, shake the hips a little bit from side to side. Rolling both knees up, squeeze them into the chest, maybe a little bouncing two, three times. Then opening the knees out, and we're gonna gently rock from side to side, holding on the knees. And 
back to center to land the feet and stretch your legs out to find Shavasana. Relax in the most comfortable position. If you need, if you had the bolster, um, you can place it underneath your knees. If you have a couple of pillows, you can also give a little support there. If you have a blanket to cover yourself, if you have the AC running like me, please do so. Make yourself comfortable. And ground yourself down by totally relaxing, dropping your full weight down. No restrictions, no holding back. Like a dead weight, allow your body to sink into the mat. Maybe there's a little final adjustment that you may need. Reposition your feet or move your hands a little bit. Find whatever that's final touch before you completely commit to total stillness. And you switch seats from that part of you that is in action all the time that is doing 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 to the witness seat the watcher naturally being still naturally silent unattached content with anything and everything and delighted at just observing, watching what's happening within you. At a physical level, as the body starts unwinding, releasing, trusting the relaxation mode. The breath is deepening, naturally following the body and its relaxation. And following body and breath, the mind start having a little less grip. Maybe from a dense clouded sky you start seeing the space between clouds, the space between thoughts. The breath deepens, the body feels lighter on one end and heavier on the other end, finding that polarity. Everything settles a little more quiet, more at ease. And you simply watch, watch what is, what is right here. Any time that your mind is still tricking you into what's the next move, what's for dinner, what did I do today, what do I need to do tomorrow, just bring it back to those tiny sensations in the body, to the space between breath, to the coolness of the air around and its soft touch on your skin the sounds around your room, around your house, past your walls, onto your street. From sounds further away to the sound of your breath, to the sound of your heartbeat inward and outward with no resistance 
senses are present but not reactive. And you drop one more layer down, one more layer in, one more breath. more spaciousness across the sky. Start feeling the air touching your toes and your feet and in the space between your toes. Feel the presence of that same air through your hands, between your fingers. on the surface of your arms, touching your skin and whichever part of your body exposed to the air around. And find your breath that was always there, but you might have lost its conscious connection for a bit. Find that next inhale entering the body, filling up the body. And find the breath on its way out from deep into the lungs, out through the back of the throat, the back of the nose, through the nostrils and out into the space around. Inner winds connecting to the outer air. Then invite some movement wherever the movement wants to be felt, bringing a sense of aliveness, bringing a sense of body, physical sensations. connection between the fingers and hands and the feet at the opposite end, through the torso, through the shoulders, through the hips, feel your neck and your head and move anything in between that feels like moving. And start progressively moving out of your Shavasana in whichever way that feels good to you. So not maybe the traditional way of bending your knees to your chest, maybe dragging your feet along the floor in any position, finding the support of the floor. From the support of the feet on the floor, maybe rocking a little bit your hips and see if that rocking is giving a little bit of a lift the shoulders, maybe a little movement of the head. And crawling your way into sitting. Using the support of the floor, getting that sense of gravity a little deeper into the body as you raise and rise up. Find an easy seated position, cross leg, half lotus, whatever feels right. Even your legs extended out is totally 
a good position to root yourself back in. Your eyes are still closed and you find that verticality of the spine in relationship with the ground. Find your roots into the grounding of the sit bones and the tailbone, the softening of the pelvic floor of the belly, feeling the subtle deep breath rising, falling, expanding, relaxing in. And bringing your hands together in front of the heart, anchoring your thumbs into that heart space, the center of the chest, the spiritual heart where you planted your sankalpa at the beginning of the practice tonight. Maybe feeling the resonance of your intention. Maybe it sprouted in something else or in full expression, full blossom. And as your hands are connected with the chest and that heart center is connected with above and below, we'll chant at that point of union one OM to close our practice tonight. Take a deep breath in. Namaste.